Here we have the constant multiple rule for derivatives. This is what I would consider a do nothing rule in the sense that you're gonna keep that constant multiple, but it's not gonna do anything to how you take that derivative. So how we would write this rule in just some function notation, it's when you have a constant times maybe x the n, constant times whatever you're trying to take the derivative of. Well, when you take that derivative, y prime, you would keep that constant but you would take the derivative normally. You'd still just bring down that power and subtract one for the new power in this case. So why I call it a do-nothing rule is because it doesn't do anything. So we're going to keep our constant multiples and then take the derivatives normally. So looking at this y equals 3x to the fourth, our derivative is going to be labeled y prime. We're ready to go ahead and take that right away. We don't have anything in the denominator to rewrite as negative or any powers that are roots or anything like that to make fractions. We're just going to bring down that power and subtract from the new power. We want to remember to keep that three though. So one way to do it is to just physically keep that three and say you have four x to whatever the new power is. Well, four minus one is three. Or I like to just multiply it right out whenever I can. Makes plugging it in easier later when we get to applications. So I'm going to keep the three and bring down the four. And three times four is 12. Bring down that power, subtract one for the new power. Four minus one is three. However you want to write it is fine. I'm normally good on just multiplying things out that I can do in my head. So moving down to that h of x, I'm going to la label that derivative h prime of x. And I'm going to bring down the power and subtract one for the new power. So keeping the two, two times 100 is 200. And then I'm going to have x to the 100 minus one is 99. Bring down the power, subtract one for the new power. I'd love to be able to jump in and do that with this one below there, 4 over x to the fifth. I can't just go in and take the derivative, though, because I need to rewrite this. If it's in the denominator, it's a negative power. So we have 4x to the negative 5. Now I'm ready to take the derivative. I'm ready to bring down the power, subtract from the new power. So I have 4 times negative 5, which is negative 20 x to the negative 5 minus 1 is going to make it more negative. We're going to be down at negative 6. Similarly, with this g of x up here, I need to take a second and just rewrite the function. I have x in the denominator, so it must be raised to a negative power. I have 10, and then it's x to the negative 2. It feels like I did work, but again, you did not take a derivative unless you brought down that power and subtracted one for the new power for this. So I'm going to bring down that negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. And then negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Bring down the power, subtract from the new power. These last couple are pretty tricky because we have some roots. We're going to rewrite them as fractions. So we have 6. And this is x to the power over root. So power is 2, root is 3. This is one where I might not multiply it out, or I might just grab a calculator and multiply it if I need to, because we're going to do 6 times 2 thirds. So you could write it like this one here and just do 6 and then parentheses 2 thirds. I'd rather just grab my calculator, or I can think about the 6 times 2 is 12 divided by 3. 6 times 2 thirds is just going to be 4 x to the, and I can grab my calculator again, 2 thirds minus 1, or I can do some subtraction off to the side here, 2 thirds minus 1 is really minusing 3 thirds, so 2 minus 3 is a negative 1 third. I think it's easier to just multiply out whenever you can and then subtract one with or without a calculator, whatever your preference is. Last one here, especially tricky to rewrite. We have a couple things going on. First of all, it's a fraction. So definitely going to be a negative exponent. We have 4x to a negative power automatically because it kind of looks like this one. Anything in the denominator becomes negative. The power is not just a nice 2 like it was up top there in letter D. We have the square root in the denominator here. So I have 4x to the negative 1 half. Power is 1, root is 2 when it's not written. And now I can bring down the power, subtract from the new power. If you need a calculator, that's fine. But negative a half of 4 is going to be negative 2. And then we have x to the negative 1 half minus 1 is subtracting 2 halves from this. So negative 1 minus 2 gives us negative 3 halves. 
bring down the power, subtract one for the new power. So we just need to multiply with a constant multiple is all that rule three is. Doesn't change anything about our power rule though.